Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, have you felt just a little bit off lately? Just a little bit off track? Maybe just a little lost? It's as if maybe you took a wrong turn lately. Maybe a couple wrong turns lately. As humans, and I'll be the first to admit, I've been off track a little bit in some areas. And the beauty of God is he's a gracious God. And when we get off track, he, he loves to, to help you out. Maybe some of you came to Christ recently and you got on the narrow road. And the narrow road is tough. Can we just agree? The narrow road is tough. If, if it wasn't, there'd be a whole lot more people on the road of righteousness following Christ. The fact of the matter is, it's a narrow road. And maybe you started off going down the right road and because of being distracted, overwhelmed, maybe weak at times, you, you kind of just got off track a bit. And what you really need is to just get back on track. Some people get off track and they stay off track because of shame of what God, you feel God's trying to do. That's the enemy. That's the enemy trying to keep you down. Sometimes you just gotta make a U-turn, man. The title of the message is Bust a U. So that's Todd language for make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. This just happened to us. We were leaving a bide block party last night and our kids wanted to go get a burger, a juicy burger. Hey now. I think the place was like, what was it called? Like hamburgers or something? Like very creative. What was it called? Cheeseburgers, I'm sorry, cheeseburgers. So we scorched, thank you for participating. She gave me her phone and typed in kind of the coordinates on Apple Maps. And you know, you have that little magnet on your car and you're driving and, and I'm kind of in some place that's a little foreign to me. So I'm like, I'm not real, so I'm driving and sure enough, I'm trying to get to the place to get a burger and I took a wrong turn and that thing I think you can, maybe there's a picture of this. Have you guys ever done that? Like, and it's just like, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, right? And so I had two choices at that time. I could have been like, yeah, bump the burger. I'm just gonna do it myself, you know? Or I could be like, man, I, I gotta do it. And so sure enough, I, I busted you, like right in front of this guy too. I felt kind of bad. It was legal, okay? And you can just tell I have Iowa plates. He's like, who's this Iowegian? You know, like <laughs> busting the U, you know what I'm talking about? And the good news is, we then navigated our way, we got back on track, and we hit that place, and boy, that smash burger was good, a little bacon in it. Come on now. I'm advertising for them right now. Y'all are like, I didn't eat yet. Okay, head over there, plug that into Apple Maps after, and get yourself a burger. Stay on track. Why do I share all this? This is the context of what you read in Jeremiah. In fact, the whole book of Jeremiah is the same message. God is using Jerry, Pastor Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah. He's like, yo, I love y'all, but you've gotten off track. God has a specific plan. He's got these laws, these rules, not to hold people down, these, this is the game plan. He's like, yo, I got this for you. This is gonna work. Head down this road. And what did they do? Ah, uh, just the same exact thing that we do. And they started serving other gods. This was called idolatry, idols. Anything that you and I put in front of God, including Todd, is idolatry. And I don't know about you, but I struggle in this area. I struggle in idolatry. I, I love God, but I get dis distracted and off track. And some of his people got so bad, though, it was crazy, because remember, King Manasseh was one of the worst kings of God's people. They got way off track. Josiah, the young king, comes in, and they, they actually start getting right, and they clean up the temple but they started drifting. And Jeremiah is preaching this message. God told him to go stand at the temple as people are coming in and preach a message. Can you imagine? It would be like me, as you're walking in, 
I'm preaching a message of repentance before you even get in. That's Jeremiah's, that's, that's the context that we're in right now. It, it got so bad that his people were sacrificing their own kids to foreign gods. Modern day abortion is basically what was happening and they were celebrating that as they were worshiping other gods. And so talk about off track. Some of us get a little off track, some of us get a lot way off track. And so the question is, what do we do? Do we get back on track? And God, it's fascinating, I don't know if you caught this and I don't know if I really even, I've read this a million times, I don't know if I caught this, I'm really excited to share with you this is what God tells Jeremiah what he's thinking. So we get like a picture into God's heart, into his mind. And you're like, can you get there? Yes, Jeremiah 8. Let's start in verse four. And I want you to write down the, the first, of maybe we'll get to four, road. Write down road, number one point, road. Jeremiah 8 and four, here's what it says. Jeremiah, say to the people, this is what the Lord says. When my people fall down, don't they get up again? When they discover they're on the wrong, when they're on the wrong road, don't they, don't they turn back? I love this. And he first says, hey, when my people fall down, and by the way, when I was reading this, this, this might free someone in here. It doesn't say if my people fall down. It says, I love that. I grew up in a, in a culture, I thought if I ever blew it and I fell down, God wanted to just kick me when I was down. And let me just free someone in here. That's just not who God is. I remember distinctly, we were in New York when our kids first took their first steps when they first started walking. I, you, know, you know parents, when, do you still have that in your memory when they first started walking? And we have twins. So one, we were in our, our apartment in New York and one of them, I, it was, uh, their grandma had them on one side. I was in the next. I think Denise was in the kitchen, if I remember right. And one of them, I'm not sure what twin, started walking first. I forget. It's probably good that I don't, because then I'd be like making fun of one. But <laughs> they, they started waddling over towards me, and they're in like, ah, and I'm like, yeah. And the other one, I promise you, the same day saw their brother do it, and they started walking as well. Same day. Well, we continued to work on that, but guess what they did? Then I passed them back to their grandma at about halfway. What did they do? They fell. What did I do as the dad? You idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> you should walk, you fall down. Or they just stand there and they just never got back up. No, they got back up. Do you see what I'm trying to preach right here? Like, like. Listen, I'm gonna free someone in here. He says, when you fall. Yeah. When I fall. <laughs> he, remember the, the, the verse? I, he says, we, he remembers we are but dust. Okay. <laughs> well, I like that. He's like, I, I created them. You know, I gave them this free will. I know a lot of them wanna do what's right, but a lot of times they blow it. They fall down. And so God's looking down, he's going, hey, my people fell, they, they got off track a bit, they just need to bust a U, they're off a bit, what, what, what's up? It's not natural, like why are they just wallowing in the mire, why are they just sitting there in that same place as they walk this road? The second thing, did you see it? Like when they discover they're on the wrong road, don't they turn back? Don't they turn back? Recently, we, our, our whole team was at a leadership conference, and there was a guy named James Clear who wrote a book called Atomic Habits. By the way, highly recommend. I, I would download it right now on Audible and, and go check it out. And it was interesting because he talked about the difference between current position and current trajectory. And I started thinking about this, and I wanna ask this question. What road are you on right now? And then bigger question, where's the road leading you? Where's the road leading me? What road am I on? Because I love what he said. He's like, the current position, okay, you're off maybe a bit. If you adjust 
and now you have a different, you have a vision in mind, and now you change the trajectory of where you're going. Now, now you got something cooking. And so what road, it, it, have you discovered what road? Have you even taken time? Have I taken time to go, you know what? I just gotta pause and see this road that I'm on right now, where's it leading me? If I, last night's a perfect example. If I wouldn't have took a U-turn, I would have never got to the burger place. What, what road am I on? Jesus says this so perfectly in Matthew 7. Check it out. It's so good. Verse 13 and 14. So good. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad. Its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. It breaks my heart. But the gateway to life is what? It's very narrow. And this hit me. And the road is difficult. Only a few ever find it. You know, you've heard, a lot of you guys have heard my story. Some of you knew, you haven't, where I don't think that I even understood the gravity of the road that I was on. I'm in college, doing my thing. And I guess I just didn't realize, I think maybe my mind was, you know, God will forgive me, I'll probably get in. I guess I didn't know the, the gravity of the situation. And when he came to me in my truck as in a snowstorm delivering a bag of weed and a sandwich, I really felt like I was literally on the road and there was a fork in the road. And it was like, man, you, you can continue down this road, but listen, this is gonna be the end of that. The end of that trajectory is gonna lead you this. It's broad, it's not gonna turn out good. Or you, the fork is you can turn here, you can literally just say, okay, I need to correct, I need to make a U-turn, I need to make a different decision, and I promise you the trajectory will be different. And it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing, because I, I, I don't know why I'm belaboring this point for a second, because I think what was keeping me away is I was like, man, I don't know if I could ever do it this way. And so at that point, there was a point of faith. I think there's someone in here right now, that's exactly where you're at. You're at listen, you're at the fork in the road. And you, you've been getting kind of like... Uh, you know how Siri, Siri's like, uh, dude, you're going the wrong way. Make a U-turn, make a U-turn. You know, that's the spirit of God. That's what he does. The spirit is like, the spirit of Siri is upon you right now. And you're heading down the wrong direction. Ah, you might not want to go that way. And you kind of get that in your spirit. That's why some of you are even here right now. Because you've been living this and you're feeling the effects. And God lovingly is like, I got a better plan. Come on. It's a different road. It's a different road. So God in our text, he's kind of scratching his head. He's like, don't normal, sane humans, when they fall, don't they get back up? When they stray and they're on a wrong road and they realize it, don't they make a U-turn? Don't they make an adjustment? He's scratching his head. Don't they get back on track? when they realize they're on the wrong road, nope. <laughs> Number two, write it down, we refuse. We refuse to turn back. Verse five, check this out, it's so wild. Then why do these people stay on their self-destructive path? Oh my goodness. We could, just, we could just preach a whole message of that one question right there. I've, I'm so fascinated by that in my own life. Why, Todd, do you stay on a self-destructive path? Why do the people of Jerusalem, what does it say? Refuse to turn back. <laughs> they cling tightly to their lies and will not turn around. You know, it's like, it's like white knuckling it through life. Yeah, I know I should turn. And Siri's just like, bust a you, bust a you, bust a you. <laughs> Especially as dudes, like we don't wanna be told like, you know, I'll get there how I want. I don't need Siri. I don't need Apple Maps. I'll get, cheese, I'll get the cheeseburger eventually. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, okay. Just, that didn't really sit well. Okay, sick. Uh, 
so much I want to talk about here. All right, let's just, let's just, let's just stick here for a second because I couldn't get past the question. Did you see it in there? Let me, let me just get back to it real quick. Why do us as humans stay on our self-destructive path? Let's just talk about that real quick. Why do we refuse? Why do we stiff arm God? I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna offer just a couple of quick thoughts of what I've observed in my own life, and maybe this applies to yours. Number one, ignorance. I, I was thinking about, and Zion, our son, over cheeseburgers last night, we were talking about this, this one question, and he had such a profound thing. He said, so many of us, we don't know any better. So I'm not saying ignorance as in you're dumb. I'm saying ignorance as in we don't know any better. I'm raised a certain way, and I've just never opened my eyes or my heart to see that life could be done differently. Have you ever thought about that for a second? Why are people stuck in a cycle of hopelessness? Because they are raised in it, and they just have never seen that there's another way to do life. And it becomes just, that's just what we do. Why, why, why do you raise your voice all the time to your family? Well, that's just what was modeled to me. I guess that's just how you do life. Why, why do you sleep around? Well, that's just what, was, that's just what we do. It's just, and, and, and we don't take time to go, I wonder if there's something different out there that we could do it. We could, can we do this thing different, maybe? And we're good people, man. We're good people, I promise you, but we just don't know any, know any different. Maybe that's you. Maybe God brought you to this church. You're like, I've never gone to a church where you read your Bible. It's possible. I promise you it'll change your life. It won't make, and by the way, it's not, oh, we are the church that read the Bible. We're sweet. No, no, hold on now. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying there's something different that happens. You're like, oh. Number two, do you see that? Undisciplined. <laughs> like Arnold would say, you lack discipline. We, <laughs> You're, you're a, like, go online, just put Arnold Schwarzenegger, you lack discipline. We used to prank call uh, one of my friends, and there's a voice where Arnold Schwarzenegger will just, you lack discipline. We would just call him and say that and then hang up on him. <laughs> it was the best, man. I love it. Have you ever thought about this? And again, it goes back to, here's the thing. I don't think that we don't want to do what's right. Most of us. It, what did Paul say? Write it down. This is so good. Romans 7. Oh, it's so good. He said, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. <laughs> Anybody? Yes, sir. I, I think that's the bulk of the church today. I really believe, I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I want to honor God. I want to honor my wife. I wanna have a good attitude. I wanna serve you well. I wanna like, finish the race with joy. I wanna do it right. But can I just tell you, I'm weak. I blow it. The things I don't wanna do, ah, I end up doing them. The things that, you know, and he flip flops it. It's so cool, because then at the, end of the, I think it's, at the end of the chapter, he's like, he's like, oh, wretched man that I am. Who's gonna deliver me from this body of death? And then he's like, but thanks to Jesus Christ, he's gonna give me the power to get through it and, and be something different and live something different. So A, give your life to Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you'll have a chance. A, but can I just give you some practical help that's helped me? Get some accountability. Just write in your notes, invited accountability. If you really want. If you don't want to continue down the same self-destructive road, get some accountability. This happened for me, and you guys know it. I, I didn't even invite it. All of a sudden, by the way, my, <laughs> so wild. my struggle was women and weed. I knew it was wrong. I'm done with all that. I need some help. And God's like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna send you to Amsterdam to break the addiction. Great, awesome. 
And I'm just gonna tell you right now, if I didn't have Kurt Warner in my room every night when I came back to the room and do life with him, I promise you I'm not standing on this stage today. What was it? It wasn't even invited accountability. It was God like, you're an idiot. I know you wanna do the right thing and I'm gonna help you, so I'm gonna send some accountability in your way. Some married people right here, you're like, you know what, I really wanna do it the right way, but we just keep on failing. Can I just lovingly say, get some accountability. Meet with someone that will loving, not judge you, but go, hey, you wanna do this right? I'm gonna ask you this question, this question, and this question, not because I'm looking to beat you down, because I'm trying to help you. You ever, you ever go uh, bowling and there's bumpers like right on the side right there? You need some bumpers, and so do I. Lately, I've been wanting to consume less sugar, but I lack discipline. You lack discipline. I love me some donuts, some creamer. And my main addiction was cereal before I went to bed. Honey bunches of oats with almonds. Well, you see the effects of it. They're called mandals. <laughs> Look it up. I'm like, I can't do it. And James Clear has such a great, oh, I love his book. Go read his book. And he said, if you really want to change your life, you have to change your habits. And, and he, let me just give you some tips. They might bring it up here, uh, James, if you're in the back, speaking to James. Yeah, look at this. He said, he said uh, make it invisible make it unattractive, the thing that you're trying to kick, make it difficult, and make it unsatisfying. I thought that was so brilliant. And I'm like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. The very first, you know what, the very first thing, because I'm like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the mandals, I'm tired of the sugar. You, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the cereal invisible. You know what I did? I threw it away and didn't buy more. By the power of God. <laughs> And my creamer of like dismantling was that Starbucks, what's it called? Caramel macchiato, Starbucks creamer. I mean, it had me, it had this hook in me. I'm like, I'm tired of it. What? Get it out of the fridge. Make it difficult. He, what does he say, Mike? Like, how does he be a environment architect? He said, why do, why do most Americans have a TV addiction? Because the TV is the very first thing in the living room. Take the TV out. If we're serious about, okay, now I'm getting, you're, you're like, don't, now you've gone too far, pastor. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's the idea. Speaking of roads, the best picture I could give you, you know when you go down a gravel road, there's grooves in the gravel road from the tires? What is that? That's repetition of the tires going into the gravel road over and over again. And if you don't like the road you're on and the habits that you've formed, the, the grooves, guess what you need to do? You need to get a different road. And, and so what happens, just picture this with me. You have, you have a gravel road with the grooves and it's the negative patterns, behaviors that are re leading you down the self-destructive road and then there's another gravel road, and it's fresh. You ever been down a gravel road where it's fresh, it just has been laid, and there's no grooves? You know when you change your life and your patterns, like you're coming to church, you're reading your Bible, you're like, dude, this is foreign, this is weird. It's like driving on a gravel road, and there's no grooves. And here's what, let me just tell, I have to tell this to someone. It's gonna take some time for that new fresh road to begin to have the healthy grooves and the healthy rhythms. And what happens is, this is what happened with me in Amsterdam with Kurt. There were times where I wanted, I, I knew it wasn't right, but I wanted to get back to the old grooves. So I had to put a barbed wire fence in the middle. And the fence was Kurt. So even in my weekdays, I couldn't get over to the old path of destruction. But here's the good news. If you neglect going down the, the old road, over time, that fills in as well. 
So when, even if you try to leap over, it still doesn't feel good and it's unsatisfying. Rhythms, road, grooves. That's the idea. Accountability. Last one real quick is indifference. Why do we stay on our road to self-destruction if we're really honest? I really don't care. I, I, it feels good and I'm just gonna do it anyways. And I know that's a hard word, man, but that's just the reality. Think about what God gave us. God gave us a necessity to breathe, to drink water, would you say those are the two top things? You, have, you're, you're pre, you didn't choose that. You and I were pre-programmed to breathe, to drink water, to eat. And what was four? Sleep? Okay, what's five? What, what do you do before you go to sleep? Sex. Okay, okay, I just threw it out there. So, but that's a God-given gift, but here's what happens. It's so dicey that you're like, it feels good, so I, I have to have it. Is anybody with me right now? I'm the only one, okay, the only human. So, so here's, here's the idea, it, it feels so good, I'm, I'm indifferent, I, it, so I'm just gonna do it anyways. But then I just continue down this road. And nothing wrong with blowing it. How about Peter? Peter blew it, but I, I, just, I just wrote this in my notes. Sometimes we just gotta learn and turn, baby. <laughs> we, we just gotta learn and turn. Okay, let's get to number three. Jot it down. So again, bringing it in context, God's people, they're, they're, they're straying off. They've made a few wrong turns. God is giving Jeremiah this message to preach in front of the temple, and God's given him how he's thinking for Jeremiah to, to, to send downfield. Look at verse six, and you can write it down as running. Number three is running. Here's what God tells Jeremiah to share. I listen to their conversations and don't hear a word of truth. Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone have remorse? You ever see like those uh, TV shows where the murderer and, and the conviction goes and they just, they're just, they have no remorse, no response? Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone say what a terrible thing I have done? No, but well, check this out. All are running down the path of sin as swiftly as a horse galloping into battle. Running. It's, it's as if we are at the starting block of a race and you know we're about to, we're about to start and as soon as the gun goes off, it's like, and really, you hear the gun, it's really a gun shooting ourselves in the foot. <laughs> and here's what we're doing. We're running the race and slowly bleeding out. And we're running down further into debauchery. Why? Because there's no truth. I told you this was gonna be a tough message, so. Let me, let me just, how do, I, how do I sum this up? quickly and efficiently, but graciously. We live in a day that is very, very similar to the days that Jeremiah was preaching. And here's what it was. We are taking God's truth, we're replacing it with our truth. And here's the problem. Again, take it up with God, not Todd. I'm just trying to relay what he, what he says. God made us, he knows how we work and how we're gonna experience his best, so he gives us a game plan. It's called the Bible. And he's like, hey, walk this out because I love you. I didn't wanna leave you blind, so I'm gonna give you truth, absolute truth. The Bible, Jesus Christ, the word of God, truth. If you have this as your base, it's gonna work. If you go away from it and create your own truth, it's a slippery slope. The, the idea is called moral relativism. And here, here, here's what it is. What I think is true for me and what's good for me is true for me. What's true for you is true for you. So we'll just 
it's just kind of relative what truth is. Can I just lovingly say, we have bought that lie from the enemy. Did you know that Satan himself is the father of lies? Bought it. So here's what we say. Well, you know, you, you talk about, this is really hurt, hitting my heart right now. We just built a high school in the middle of America with bathrooms that are not gender specific. And listen, I want you to hear my heart. I understand people struggle with their sexual identity. It breaks my heart. And I love people. We need to love people right where they're at and help them. But if we start navigating truth of how God set it in order for us to move forward in our culture, it's a matter of time where the culture is going to unravel. And I don't say that in a condescending way, thinking I got it all figured out. But what I'm trying to, to, to point at is we are in the same times and we have to just stand on truth. Our culture, our kids, our future is at stake and we don't point fingers or bash people with the Bible, but we say, hey, we love you enough to tell the truth. And I'm, I'm working through things in my own life where the Bible says not to do it and I do it. So I am the chief of sinners. However, I'm never gonna like, compromise the word of God. And we have to share this. I was just picturing a, an incoming freshman, freshman little girl going in the same bathroom as a, as a big, hairy senior man. It breaks my heart. What, where are we at? Where are we at? We gotta say no more, man. Like, hey, I love you, but that's That's wrong. There is right and there is wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. And I, again, I, I'm not, I want you to hear me. Like, I don't, I'm not looking for an applause or I'm not looking. I just want to say as your pastor, man, like, I want to speak the truth and I never want to back down, but I don't want to hurt anybody. I want everybody to feel welcome at this church. I don't care what you're working through right now. You, I'm working through some stuff too but we will not compromise the word of God. Okay. Let me just read this. Again, I told you, man, I'm just trying to bring the word. This was happening when, when Paul was writing to the church in Rome. Romans chapter one, verse 25. Do you have it? It's 25 through 27. I might have messed you up, James. It's verse 25 through 27. Romans chapter one, 25 through 27. I'm just gonna read it. And you guys, you take it up, you just read it yourself and make sure that you, you work it out with you and the Lord, okay? They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things created, that God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise, amen. That's why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. And that is so, so sad. But God loved us so much, he gave us free will, so he let us do what we wanted to do. Even women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, the way God made it, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. And again, man, I, I'm just reading what the Bible says, and I'm telling you, I'm working through some stuff on my own. I'm the, I'm the chief of sinners. But the word of God is the word of God. This is true. It's true. So finally, write it down, number four, return. Return. See, and this is, what did I ask you? What did I ask me? Have I gotten off track, even a little bit? Maybe you took a couple of wrong turns. Maybe you took several wrong turns. God says, okay, I knew you were going to do that. Turn, just make the adjustment. Just make the autocorrect. When Siri says, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, just, just obey the spirit of God in Siri. Return, make, bust a U, turn around, turn around. Verse seven, and here, here's God, God said, because he creates birds and he creates you know, the, the world to kind of set a pattern for us. He says, even the stork 
that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration. As do the turtle dove, swallow, the crane. They all, what do they do? They all return at the proper time each year. But not my people. They don't even know the Lord's laws. I wrote in my notes, I feel like God's saying, don't be a dork, look at the stork. <laughs> Tired of insane, follow the crane, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, I mean, he's really like, come on, guys, bird brains, let's, let's, even the birds know, like, when to return, how to migrate. My favorite is, uh, we used to live in Copperfields, this neighborhood, holler at your boy, and they, for whatever reason, I would see the, the geese that were migrating, you know what I'm talking about? And like, they always go in the V, you know? Uh, and, the guy, and the guy in the front is like, uh, 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 or no, the guy's in the back, they're like, yeah, you can do it, uh, uh, and they're, they're just floating, and they're rolling. And so God's like, like, check out these dudes. I was studying migration, you know, way more than you wanna know, so I'll spare you the details. But I will deduce it to a couple of things, which was interesting. The birds, why do they migrate? Why do they ignore south, that kind of stuff? And it boiled down to the weather, the climate change reduced the amount of resources that were sufficient for them to actually live. Stay with me. They didn't have enough nesting and they didn't have enough food. And here's the question. How's your climate right now? What's your climate producing? Is it producing the resources that God wants for you? Or is the climate we're permitting reducing that and now I'm starving? I'm starving of hope, of purpose, of who I am. And what you need to do is return to your God. And what happens? Now he provides resource in abundance. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, powerful, return. Someone say return. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna close with my favorite commercial of all time. And um, as I do, here's what I want you to hear. I don't want you to hear shame. I don't want you to hear um, God beating you down. I want you to hear God saying, you've made some wrong turns. I love you, I just want you to turn. You've been, you've been kind of going with the way of the world, going down the down escalator, and all he wants you to do is turn. Just turn, make bust of you, that's it. Don't make up excuses, don't say what had happened, just, take, just bust of you. And, and it's like this, you know what repentance, all repentance is is this, you guys ready? I know it's gonna fascinate you. Here it is. That's it. So let me set up the commercial and then I'll, I'm a commentator, so I'm gonna try to com commentate on this so we don't get kicked off YouTube. So any event, shouldn't have said that. Um, this is a man who was fed up with fast food and he was tired of hamburgers on the warming tray when he wanted to walk in and, man, he wanted to order a, like a fresh, juicy burger that sizzled. He was tired of it. And everybody was eating these burgers that were all on the warming tray and stale. He wanted to do something about it. So check it out. Let's run this. Let's see what happens. See, look at all these people, man. They just, they just blindly just go, just... And, and there's the homie. He's like, yo, what's up with this, dude? Like, hold on. Something ain't quite right here. What's going on? These guys, I, I, I want to I wanna change, man. I, I, I need to turn. I need to make an adjustment. I, I, wanna, I want something hot off the grill. I want it to sizzle. Any y'all with me? I'm tired of not living out God's best. We, we need to do something about this. Y'all with me? Let's go. And the brother's like, yeah, that's right, baby. Let's go. Come on. 
oh yeah, sizzle, like let's go, turn. And he turns. All right. <laughs> Oh boy, let's pray. God, thanks for the word. It never comes back void. It's fresh. It's, and your heart is so clear. Thank you that you didn't leave us here blind. You gave us absolute truth. Then you gave us free will. And now we say, God, forgive us when we get off track. You know the areas that I need to make adjustments and bust U-turns and get back on track. And you know all of us, you see us. And I wanna pray those of us that have been believing lies about ourselves, about you, about what is truth, we pray for revelation. And it can only come from you. We pray for deep revelation right now for your glory. Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I just wanna land the plane with an opportunity of response. I'm not sure what God's doing in your heart. I'm guessing in a room this size, there's some adjustments that need to be made. If you don't absolutely have to be at brunch right now, I, I just invite you to just stay with me for these last couple of minutes. They're very important. God's speaking to us by his spirit He's lovingly saying, hey, hey, I got something for you. It's different. How many Christians in here right now are bold enough to slip up their hand with me and say, God's kind of knocked on my heart and he's, he's, he wants me to make some adjustments in my life. How many? We pray for you, God. We do pray. You can put your hands down. We, we pray for courage, maybe invited accountability, some practicality, but most of all, your power and your grace. We need you in these days. In a world of chaos, we need absolute truth and then the power to turn. Help us, in Jesus' name.